Good afternoon. So I will uh, present uh, Safir, which I was co-coordinating, co and uh, it was coordinated by Isabel Le Schwartz Cornell from uh, INRA. So what is uh, SAFIR about? The scope of SAFIR was to uh, generate effective, safe, affordable vaccination strategies towards the control of endemic pathogen responsible for economic losses in livestock. But that goes much uh, beyond that. It's more like uh, generating integrated approaches against representative uh, pathogens. And we choose uh, six uh, uh, pat main pathogens in, uh, in cattle, pig, and, uh, and poultry. So it goes much more uh, to an ultimate goal, which was to produce novel tools for healthier livestock, again, in a view of integrated strategies. So the, the heart of the project was vaccination, but it goes much beyond this. So you will ask me, well, what is the, the, the connection with the issue of climate mitigation and adaptation, which is gathering us uh, today? So to answer these questions, uh, we can uh, look more and think, what are the impacts that we are reviewed, or seen already, we heard this morning, uh, impacts of climate change on animal health and welfare? Well, we can divide these impacts on uh, two categories. First on the top, the direct effect, like heat stress, on the, the animal health and welfare. And it goes from uh, effect impact, clear impact on immune suppression, oxidative stress, metabolic disruptions, which are causing ultimately infection and death. So you can see the direct uh, connection between uh, climate change and, and animal health and welfare. You have got also indirect effects, which are maybe uh, less uh, easy to see, but which can cause uh, severe damage because of indirect effects <coughs> through uh, the effect of climate change on the distribution of pathogen and vectors, for example, uh, gastroenteric uh, parasites like here, or the effect on feed water, uh, which sees its quality and quantity uh, being uh, damaged by the climate change. And also, maybe we don't think always about that, but the effect of climate change on the people who are go going to take care of the animals. And if there are some severe uh, climate change which are affecting the, the human behavior, it has got also an indirect effect on the way the animals are treated, so on their health and welfare. So with all this thinking, now we can go back to the project and see what have been the outcomes which are related to direct and indirect effect of climate issues. So first you saw immunosuppression. So a higher risk of immunosuppression and epidemics. So clearly the fact of improving vaccine is going towards that direction. We have been providing new vaccine candidates, attenuated recombinant or DIVA vaccines, which are able to monitor vaccine efficacy at large scale and to protect animals in control programs based on biosecurity. Like, for example, working specifically on more long lasting effect of the protection. Also, we have been working on edge events of specific types for species and age categories. And for example, we have been uh, concentrating our efforts on neonates because we see that neonates are certainly the most sensitive animals. So if they're the most sensitive animals to infection, they are also the most sensitive animals, the age to uh, heat stress, to indirect and direct effects. So it's very important to look at a crucial time where you can uh, put our efforts. And more globally, we uh, developed new knowledge in immunoprotective mechanism. And we also have been very innovative in developing mathematical modeling on vaccine risk and effectiveness, which will be crucial to put in, in, uh, in practice in case of epidemics. You saw also direct indirect effects, so the higher risk of abiotic and biotic stresses, so infections, heat, food, water, uh, on, so a need of improved health and robust health of animals. And so we have been also advanced uh, the marker discovery and evidence of underlying genetic variability on the vaccine response and more globally on the prediction of immunocompetence by identifying genetic markers and blood biomarkers of good and bad responders, which can be uh, in, in implemented in breeding program to uh, improve health, robustness and adaptation more globally. So you see we are really in the heart of the subject. 
And last not least, uh, also very original, I think, in the, in the project, has been the, uh, to, to look at, to develop improved social economic models which can uh, evaluate the economic impact of severe diseases. So by these models, we can further enrich them with environmental parameters or other diseases. And also the prediction of the socioeconomic benefits. So what I talk about socioeconomics, it's including also the necessary changes of practice from farmers, breeders, to adapt to the consequences of climate change. So what did we learn from the project on research industry collaboration and climate issues? We learned and we heard this morning that it, there is a high need for interdisciplinary project to address this complex issue that goes beyond research research but also research industry. So it needs communication time to understand each other, openness, humility, Ability and to change our view and to explore new areas of thinking. Involving industry and stakeholders, it's difficult to involve competitors sometimes, but we never, never involve stakeholders enough, and we should do that from the start. From, uh, we have to apply the results from a research to changing field, so that needs further validation and access to more information. For example, these candidate markers, are there predictive of vaccine response in a more stressing environment. So we should test that on different genetics and environments. And last, a difficulty at to address a real integrated animal health management level. And we need to build and validate, we heard this, integrated holistic environmental system approach to really include pathogen and host as animal in production system. So the recommendation is the to improve sustainability and innovative capacity of the livestock in a changing world. So it should support the research innovation on the development of methods linking climate data with disease occurrence and further implementation of this application. Research innovation on tackling together climate change mitigation and innovative management animal welfare and on critical factors like geographical diversity farmers practices, so include social science. And there should be incentives on co-creation of win-win situation between all relevant actors and transparency, we heard that this morning, flow of information, trust and awareness to allow this improvement. Thank you.